Hello, everybody. I received lots of requests to look at Jonathan Kaminga's Christmas Day. This is definitely the biggest game of his career in terms of minutes in an important game. Here's Kaminga's welcome to the big league ambulance chaser lawyer ball of Chris Paul. He's going to try to pick up Chris Paul. Full court pressure. Chris Paul says, hey, I see your arm is near me. Maybe if I just swing my arms through your arm with the ball, that'll be called a foul because technically, bang, absolutely shameless. You know the foul is a bunch of baloney when in order to describe why it's a foul, you have to use the words, well, technically, or the ends justify the means. Steph Curry seems pretty unimpressed by this kind of foul baiting. It's like, don't you have any shame? How can you possibly justify getting these cheap free throws? You're 80 feet away from the basket and you run your arms into a defender's arms and that somehow two free throws and the answer is well technically here's another view of the, the magical moment Plunk. okay now in fairness to kaminga that was a rookie mistake because he didn't know that chris paul was gonna lawyer ball him like that and also chris paul does this to all the young players like in this game alone he got cheap fouls on Juan Toscano Anderson, exact same rip through move. And later in the game, he's going to try to turn a tiny foul into a flagrant by dragging Witherspoon to the ground. So Chris Paul is the master of these baloney fouls. So I'm gonna give Kaminga a pass on this one. This play is a tricky one. Got a driver getting around Otto Porter Jr. Kaminga had been marking JaVale McGee, but JaVale is now rolling. So I think Kaminga believes that Bielitsa is going to rotate to cover JaVale. So he's going to let JaVale get handed off to Bielitsa. But Bielitsa, Bielitsa sees Cameron Payne turning the corner and he is anticipating that Payne is going to pass across to the open Shamit for corner three. So Bielitsa is anticipating this and jumping the lane, which leaves JaVale McGee completely open and Kaminga has to process this. In fact, I'm not completely sure what the optimal defense would have been on this. Maybe something like Bielitsa rotates to JaVale and Kaminga goes out to the corner. But anyway, Belly is doing this. And so that means that it's now up to Otto Porter to flap his arms to try to prevent this dish right to JaVale. And also Kaminga does read the situation and he tries to switch over to JaVale. Luckily, once pass into the corner is thwarted, he just gets up in the air and he tries to release it all the way out. Reset to Kem Johnson. Steph Curry sees this happening all the way and he goes to intercept. Nicely done. Witherspoon is coming over to try to box out Chris Paul. So Kaminga will go up with a shot and it's a very nice jumper straight in, but there's gonna be a big kerfuffle here because Witherspoon dared to touch Chris Paul. Offensive foul. Let's see how Weatherspoon feels about this. He says, no, he hooked my arm. Chris Paul's looking at him with the dead eyes of someone who was foreclosed on too many bank loans. Weatherspoon coming in to box out Chris Paul. Yeah, there is a little bit of contact there, but Chris Paul tries to turn this little bump into an international incident. Chris Paul was a teammate of Blake Griffin for a while, so they both developed these mixed martial arts techniques. Chris Paul is going to take his leg and sweep the leg underneath Weatherspoon to take out his leg and then he's going to grab Weatherspoon and pull him to the ground. which is dangerous. There's the nice hook. Taking him down. Chris Paul gets a review for a flagrant. Well, there's a little bit of a bump. You are allowed to touch people in basketball. And so then from this bump, Chris Paul is suddenly going to be shot out of a cannon. He's going to take the leg, sweep, sweep the leg. And then as he's falling, he's going to grab Witherspoon's arm to make sure Witherspoon gets pulled down on top. Sweep the leg. Look at that, that's a nice view right there. Pull the arm, sweep the leg. Why choose? There he goes. Kaminga gets a little lost on this defensive possession. He starts off marking this man in the weak side in the Warriors defense. If someone cuts on offense like this, if they switch, then they don't bother switching. They just stay in their places and Kaminga is just going to cover whoever's in this spot. So he's got a lot to process here. Now he's covering someone new because there's an interchange. He has to cover this pass across. 
As Chris Paul goes through, Kaminga has to stunt in to harass the drive. And now he's got to keep track of his man who was over here. Cameron Payne decides to be tricky and he just moves over Iyer up to the wing. Kaminga has just lost his man. So after the stabbing, he probably should have made visual contact with his man, but instead he wandered into the middle of the paint. I think he was possibly thinking, I am in drop behind Otto Porter in case Booker gets by. But that means that his man is completely free for an open three-pointer. That's not a lack of defensive effort, but definitely some kind of mix up there. Kaminga is pretty together on this defensive possession. He's guarding Devin Booker, who's cutting through, but then tries to fake out Kaminga by suddenly reversing. Booker is definitely free, and Chris Paul looks ready to set a screen on Kaminga. So you'll see Kaminga point and communicate with his zero brother. You got a switch, so Gary Payton the second will switch. Good switch. Now Chris Paul wants the ball, but if you think there's going to be an exciting Chris Paul Kaminga duel, you'd be wrong because Chris Paul sees it's much easier to attack Bielitsa. This is a very awkward little screen by Crowder to force Bielitsa to switch to Chris Paul, which does happen. Crowder cuts through, Kaminga stays with him. I think it's clear that the game plan is that there should be no help that comes when Chris Paul drives the lane. Bielitsa is with him. It looks like Chris Paul could just go in for a contested layup here, and maybe that's what the Warriors want. Maybe they have some analytics that say Chris Paul's layups aren't all that good now when they're contested. Kaminga does feel Crowder behind him, and he does box him out from this. I like that Kaminga is fighting for this rebound. He only had one rebound on the game, so that's definitely an area for him to improve given his excellent athleticism and awareness, but he definitely was involved in the rebounding process. So here, got a good box out happening. Ball comes up. A little bit weird how he leaned forward to get this ball. I don't know if there's some physical pushing and pulling happening, but a weird angle jump. But anyway, he does get his hand on this and that pops it out. Right to GP2. There's Chris Paul staring at him with the cold eyes of a man who's denied a hundred insurance claims on technicalities. Okay, so Chris Paul being guarded by Kaminga. Now Kaminga's giving him a healthy amount of space given the uh, cheap rip through foul he got last time. Chris Paul's gonna have to dig deep into his bag of cheapness. This seems like too much of a coincidence to be a real coincidence. Chris Paul keeps on jab stepping and aiming right at Kaminga's left foot. One step near his left foot. He does a little giddy up step and then he's gonna stab again to try to get his left foot. Kaminga very quickly pulls it back. And then Chris Paul, you don't get to be one of the great and sleaziest point guards of all time by giving up so easily. He's gonna try again to stab onto Kaminga's foot. There he got it. Now he's stepping directly on Kaminga's foot, which is definitely going to cause either Kaminga to fall or Chris Paul to fall, and then there'll be a foul called, right? Well, amazingly, because of the physics of it, he ends up knocking Kaminga to the ground by stepping on his foot. So now Chris Paul can dribble up for an open three. And of course, some people will say, wow, what an incredible crossover. You really took Kaminga's ankles. No, you took his foot. So that's the Chris Paul experience. They did match Kaminga up on Chris Paul for a few plays, and the Phoenix Suns did not want any part of it. They had seen enough of that, and so they instead ran plays to exploit Bielitsa. Bale's just going to have the ball in space, and he's just going to try to drive on Bielitsa. Again, a sign of respect. Kaminga's guarding Paul, and they just keep him out of the play. Cameron Payne trying to exploit Bielitsa's drop defense over here. Mid range. Ever since. Kaminga got onto Chris Paul about two minutes ago. The Suns have run everything away from Chris Paul, just left him out of the play to take Kaminga out of the defense. But in this play, there's four on the shot clock. They throw Chris Paul the hand grenade, though he's really got to do it. A Crowder tries to set the screen. Kaminga showing his agility, darting around the screen. Chris Paul goes around anyway. Crowder gets just a little piece of Kaminga, puts him behind. But Chris Paul trying to get to his favorite spot, the elbow. Bielitsa rotating very slowly. And Kaminga from behind swoops in with this really good contest, no foul. 
and I have noticed that he manages to contest a lot of shots without fouling, which is a huge skill. And so Chris Paul has to lean all the way back and try to throw a fadeaway up in the air, and, which he does. Mission accomplished, no basket. Kaminga guarding Chris Paul with a certain amount of disrespect. The Warriors play ice, so they try to force the driver to go along the sideline instead of going to the middle, where there's a lot more possibilities. But you don't usually ice someone at half court because Chris Paul should just be able to blow by, right? But Kaminga's just trusting in his speed and length that he can stay with Chris Paul. There he goes. Paul trying some herky-jerky moves on Kaminga. Kaminga's absolutely staying with him. Another one. So is Chris Paul the fastest point guard around? Of course not, but it's great that Kaminga can guard Chris Paul and not pick up a lot of fouls. There have been one or two really cheap ones, but he has basically taken Chris Paul out of the offense here. Chris Paul trying to go deep into his bag of cheapness. He's trying to just pile drive Kaminga and use some strength to throw Kaminga into Jay Crowder. And if it's not called as a defensive foul, then Kaminga will be screened by Crowder and Gravity. So here comes the pile driver. Push, push, push. Actually manages to do it. He gets Kaminga thrown into Crowder. I think Kaminga tripped on Bielitsa's foot. But either way, Kaminga does a very agile recovery. Like he is falling and he is bouncing off of Jay Crowder, but he lands on his feet and somehow there he is right with Chris Paul after all that. Chris Paul swinging some elbows and then finally he just chucks the ball. He's like, ah, you do something with it. There's Chris Paul with the cold eyes of a man who's evicted too many orphans to count from their houses. I take this as a sign of respect that Phoenix is trying all kinds of cheap tricks on Kaminga. So Kaminga is still guarding CP3. Jay Crowder is not only going to set a screen, but he's going to put both hands in Kaminga's back. He's going to try to push him into Chris Paul, which would be a foul. Here comes the push. Push! And he does get a little bit of contact, but not enough to really call anything. So Chris Paul just goes by. Yelitsa rotates to contain, and now Kaminga has caught up. Chris Paul tries to maintain the advantage. He knows that Bielitsa and Kaminga are on him. Now he turns and rifles it back to the open man. Juan Tosano Anderson saw that unfolding, and he does a great rotation as the pass is in the air. Steph now rotating to cover this cutter, and also this shooter in the corner. Bielitsa trying to get back in the play. That's just a sweet rotation. Now Steph peels off, takes the corner man. Bielitsa has rotated to cover this cutter. All advantage diffused. That's just sweet defense. Phoenix showing that Chris Paul is not dead yet. They set a hard screen on Kaminga. They know that Kaminga has been fighting through screens and Draymond won't switch. Although that would be a pretty good option. So Chris Paul gives Kaminga the hesitation move because Kaminga is coming from this angle and then he just goes fast. There's an inside screen from Aiton here on Looney. Looney would naturally be the person to rotate, but Aiton is really wrestling him here. And Chris Paul makes back, yet Kaminga on his back. And now with this lead block, he's got a clean road. But that was also a nice contest from Kaminga without fouling. So all in all, not a bad performance from the youngster. Played pretty strong defense with a reduced number of mistakes on switching and coverage. Seemed to be understanding what the Warriors were trying to accomplish on the court. Though I think if he keeps playing like this, he can definitely have a roll off the bench.